When an abundant supply of oxygen is available to a cell, fermentation does not go on at all, but rather cellular respiration occurs. Cellular respiration occurs not in the cytosol of the cell, but rather in organelles called mitochondria, which in some ways can be compared to the chloroplasts of plants. But rather than building glucose molecules, they break glucose molecules down into carbon dioxide and water. Mitochondria have two membranes, producing two compartments. An inner compartment, enclosed by the inner membrane and containing the mitochondrial matrix, and an intermembrane compartment between the inner and outer membranes. The first step of cellular respiration is glycolysis, which we looked at earlier. As you'll remember, glycolysis takes place in a cell's cytosol and produces two molecules of pyruvic acid per molecule of glucose. In order to proceed with the process of cellular respiration, the two pyruvic acid molecules produced by the division of each glucose molecule must be transported through both mitochondrial membranes into the mitochondrial matrix. Large pores in the outer membrane of the mitochondria make it highly permeable to pyruvic acid molecules. Pyruvic acid molecules cross the inner membrane through special proteins. Once within the matrix, each of the two pyruvic acid molecules is split into a CO2 molecule and a two-carbon molecule called an acetyl group. Each acetyl group immediately attaches to a molecule called coenzyme A, forming an acetyl-coenzyme A complex, or acetyl-CoA for short. During these reactions, an energetic electron and a hydrogen are transferred to positively charged NAD plus ions forming one energy-carrying NADH molecule per acetyl-CoA. The two acetyl-CoA molecules enter a cyclic pathway, known variously as the Krebs cycle, referring to its discoverer, Hans Krebs, or the citric acid cycle, named for the first product in the reaction sequence, citric acid. We'll refer to it as the Krebs cycle.